Hey there, Karen from ediblewildfood.com here. And I'm taking advantage of 30 minutes in my life right now to show you that this is perhaps something you may want to consider doing as well. Over there, my car is in that shop over there and it's getting rust proofed right now. And instead of just sitting in there doing something that is probably mindless, I thought I'd come out here and check out behind these buildings to see what is growing back here. And this is a great opportunity for any forager to discover new areas and to just use this as a means to discover new plants and add these to your repertoire of knowledge. So the yellow plants, goldenrod, and we have Queen Anne's lace or wild carrot that has gone to seed. There is some ground ivy or creeping Charlie. Dandelions. Narrow leaf plantain or ribwort. Obviously somebody has been back here. I wouldn't be using those. And right here we have some butter and eggs. Although these have been categorically deemed as being safe to eat, this is something I wouldn't really want to put into my salad or kitchen on a regular basis, just a once in a while item, as there's really not a lot of science out there. So in small amounts, once in a while, the leaves and those flowers. So what I'm going to do right now, what I thought was really cool, is I'm going to go over there and check out all those wild edibles that are lined up neatly for us. Of course I wouldn't really want to forage what food is here unless I'm in an all-out survival situation, but this is a learning opportunity. And let's start with Lady's Thumb. dandelion and there's a dandelion that's gone to flower and seed curly dock or yellow dock more ladies thumb we have a little bit of Plantago Major in there, your broadleaf plantain. More ladies' thumb, dandelion. We're getting a lot more yellow dock or curly dock right here. So easy to identify. You have those really wavy margins. And lady's thumb, when it's gone to flower, is definitely a very easy to identify plant as well. I will put links to these plants in the description below so you can read more information about how to identify them and what parts are edible. So pretty much uh, just dandelion, lady's thumb, curly dock and there are some seeds of the curly dock which are also usable so now I'm gonna go down over there and show you what's on there. the right we have milkweed on the left we have mullen and we have thistle which is edible once you remove all the barbs. Unless it's a survival situation, I dare not even begin to attempt to remove all those. And we have a lot of wild carrot in here. Some late bloomers, but that's okay.
And here is that nasty ragweed that a lot of people are allergic to, which brings up the reason why a lot of people sneeze even when they think there is no ragweed around. The pollen of this plant travels hundreds of miles and it gets a couple of miles up into the atmosphere as well. Now, to a trained eye, I see catnip right there. That is definitely mint and this is definitely catnip. More narrow leaf plantain as well as here. And those, let's get rid of this for a sec. And there's wild carrot right here, first year. The second year of growth is when it goes to flower and seed. Now I'm just gonna move my camera over here for a sec. Check this cool find. All right, it's not a wild edible, but it's always kind of neat when uh, you go out places and you discover things that you normally never see. So we have more ribwort or narrow leaf plantain and it really hasn't gotten too sunny here yet this morning so the flowers here have not opened up fully yet. New England aster. And I think I'll wrap it up here. Nope, right here, there we have some daisies. Oh, we have a snail in there with the daisies. So there you are. Oh, wait, <laughs> see, I could keep going forever. Right here, we have year one of evening primrose. And I think I better keep my body still at this time. No, see, <laughs> there's always something my eye catches. Wild grapes, Riparia, Vetus Riparia. Although this is a very young one, so there are no grapes at this point, just the leaves. And let's uh, look at that. Look at that beautiful, huge evening primrose. And even St. John's wort. How cool is that? This is September 17th. And this is a plant that typically begins to bloom on June 26th, which is St. John the Baptist Day. More daisies. And I can hear you saying now, hang on Karen, I thought you said you were gonna wrap things up. <laughs> I will right now. I wanna thank you all for watching, but I really urge you that when you have opportunities like this, explore areas and you'll never know what you're gonna find. Never let moments like waiting for your car go to waste. Use those moments if you're in an area that you can take advantage of. And as I mentioned, you gotta make sure that the area is clean if you want to use wild plants as food. There are certain areas in here I don't think I would trust as far as I'd throw my life unless I was in a total survival situation. However, this is just a great way to kill time and take advantage of everything out there. More learning examples of wild foods. Thank you so much for watching everybody. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much. And if you're not, please consider subscribing and be sure to share this video if you liked it. Thank you.